because I had spent my whole life getting to this dream moment. I'm on the other side of the fence. I'm in, I signed a contract. I have the opportunity, but we have that hard conversation. And it's like, well, we got to part ways then. It's not going to work out. So you just approached the general manager or the coach and you said, hey, you know what? This, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm concerned for my health. I don't think I can keep blocking people with my head. And they, and they were like, okay, so we just end your contract then. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's what it is. That's what it is, man. I had a meeting with, uh, with North Turner and the general manager, the GM. We're sitting in, in the office upstairs and we had, you know, a long conversation. And what's, what's crazy about this is at the time, like I had to process all these emotions and I didn't tell anybody. I didn't, you know, tell any of my teammates. I didn't tell my position coach. I didn't tell my family, my friends, like still to this day, I think most people that know me and know that I played football still don't know this story because I tell the story on the podcasts, but not everybody listens to podcasts, but I didn't tell anybody. Yeah. My friends and family don't listen to my podcast either. It's okay. Right. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. You can't expect that all your friends and family are going to listen, but still so many people don't understand that. Like I was in this moment of decision where I had to figure out, am I going to keep playing or not? And so I had the conversation and I, we, we talked about how like, I just can't play the same in this position because of what I'm feeling in my head. So, um, yeah, we had the tough conversation and it was like, all right, well, you can't be on the team anymore. You know, like that's, it's just not going to work out. And so we had that conversation. I walked away and, and it was hard because I knew, all right, do I go to other teams now? Do I play tight end for another team? And I was talking to other teams too, but I, w I had already done enough damage. I had already kind of like shaken start you know shaking my brain enough to where even if i go play tight end and i'm not having the same collisions my brain has already had enough damage done to it just in that short period of time and even to this day like if i'm playing soccer with my kids and i go do a header it it shakes it rattles my brain a little bit that doesn't feel good because of what i did in football you know yeah that makes sense um It's, and so this is where you had to make a, a pivot. I mean, you had to make a, pivot, a different yeah. career choice. Yeah. And, and that was so hard because I had spent my whole life getting to this dream moment. I'm on the other side of the fence. I'm in, I signed a contract. I have the opportunity to continue playing. I mean, North Turner's telling me I'm going to have a long career. He's in my corner, but we have that hard conversation. And it's like, well, We got to part ways then it's not going to work out because um, this is the position we need you in. And so walked away and I didn't spend really any time dwelling on it. I think that was what helped me as I probably wasn't smart enough at that time to have the, the life perspective that life is pretty tough. Like life is hard. Um, there's not, you know, the perfect job opportunity for every person. You kind of got to go find it and create it yourself in a lot of cases. And I just didn't have enough life perspective to know that that was a big deal. So I just took action. I just moved forward and figured, I'm going to figure this out. I believe in myself. I'll get this worked out. And I had a good buddy of mine I played college football with, and he called me up. He knew I was done. He basically walked me in the door to a corporate job and uh, walked me past all the red tape before the company went public. And it was like, this is, this is my next dream. This sounds like an incredible opportunity. I'm going to make a ton of money. This is great. Like this will set me up for what I knew life after football would eventually be. This sounds like a great opportunity. Well, I walk in the door, I bust my butt. I have no, no skills. Like we talked about at the beginning, no, no skills besides hard work. I put in the hard work, I went from that seven figure contract to now a $65,000 salary in San Francisco, the Bay area, which is like, you know, you're, you're making negative money. You don't even have enough money to like, you know, barely afford groceries and pay your rent. So money dried up really fast. And 
after that first year, I expected, okay, they're going to give me a big pay raise. And they gave me a $2,000 pay raise. I was now at $67,000. And my, my stomach, I just felt sick, dude. <laughs> like, this is not going to get me there. So I went back to my 424 square foot studio in San Francisco. And I just remember getting on Google and thinking like, well, what else do I even like? I kind of knew I liked real estate just because I remember watching HGTV shows with my parents and I was like, eh, maybe, maybe I'll be a realtor or something. So I type in how to get started in real estate and I found a free podcast. Um, and it was talking about how to get started with little to no money, which sounded great to me because I had little to no money at that time. <laughs> and uh, so I learned about wholesaling real estate and how you could find sellers that were motivated and needed to sell a property, get it under contract and sell it to a, another buyer, another investor and make the difference of what you could sell it for. So I just took action again. I just didn't know enough to, to get in my own way and took action. I did my first deal in three months. And then I had that proof of concept and I saw that this was going to be the vehicle that could get me back to that dream life that I saw was possible with the NFL. And so, um, I hadn't, I hadn't looked back since just took massive action, had lots of failures in between, usually my own mistakes of just like rushing into deals that, and trying to force deals to happen because I wanted to do that next deal and, and have success. But, uh, at this point now, you know, we've done almost 600 deals of, you know, fixing and flipping houses of wholesaling houses. We also have a rental portfolio of around $10 million. And um, I've got you know a business partner and a team of eight people in Central California where I grew up. And I, I'm still here living in San Diego, doing everything virtually. And we were joking before the show. I, I most days, you know, if my family looks and sees if I'm they, they can't tell if I'm being productive or not, because I'm usually sitting around in my underwear, you know. I put pants for you uh on for you today, but Oh, I appreciate it. Out of my underwear. <laughs> I don't, I don't yeah. get that a lot. Not too many people put <laughs> pants on for me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Just for good measure, I put pants on today just in case I stood up. But usually I'm sitting around in my underwear, you know, talking on my phone or, um, but really what I love to do most, what real estate has done for me, what I had hoped the NFL would do for me, but what real estate has done for me is giving me back that freedom because of, if you set up real estate the right way and you have a team of people, then you're not going to open houses. You're not going to other people's houses all the time. Um, you can, you can manage the business even virtually like I do. And yesterday, you know, we, I went to the beach with my kids and we went and got pizza after watched a movie. Um, you know, a couple of days out of the week, I'm going to, to sports practices with my kids, you know, in the middle of the afternoon and spending time coaching them. And um, that's what it's all about for me is being able to have that freedom. And, you know, I can work out in the middle of the day and, you know, stay fit and, and exercise. And uh, for me, that's what I always dreamt of is being able to have financial freedom so that I could wake up and choose to do whatever I wanted to do. Now, I'm very passionate about real estate and I'm always wanting to you know, push that and, and achieve. I wonder and, where you get that. I'm not sure we get the hold of, let's I don't push know further and let's work harder. <laughs> yeah, no, all those, all those, uh, all the life lessons I got from sports definitely transferred over from just that hard work and, you know, pushing to the next level and being competitive. And, uh, and I think, I think that's, that's all been helpful for me. Yeah, I think, uh, so you mentioned quite a few points there. Um, and one thing that, that, I mean, one of the few things that stood out for me is, um, you know, like you're saying, well, I became an NFL player, I signed a contract, all of a sudden everyone wants to be friends, etc. Like, I've never got to experience that, even though I started making money, right? Mm -hmm. My life is extremely boring. Like, I'm probably one of the most boring person people you'll ever meet. Um, you know, it's just me in my basement and... I'm, I'm as passionate about my business as you as you are about yours. So if oftentimes it's like, you know, if my kids will ask me or see me, it's like, hey, hey, dad, what are you doing? It's like I'm working, but it's me in front of a laptop. Right. Right? It's really not, exactly. not much going on unless I'm recording. 
uh, then, then yeah. Um, but you're right. Like it's this, it's the privilege of being, being able to choose what to do and when to do it. So if you choose to work 14 hours straight today, that's your choice, not requirement. And if you're choosing to work until two and then go hang out with your kids or, you know, attend to practice, like actually just literally today, um, I took a break between about 10 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. because um, the school all of a sudden sent out an email and said that they're, uh, they're opening the doors to the, like, the last rehearsal for the upcoming concert they've got. And my daughter's performing. So it's not the actual concert. It's the rehearsal, right? Mm-hmm. But you can come in and you can watch. And, you know, me and my wife, we just went and watched Right. And I think I was the only dad in the audience. You know, there were some some other parents there, mostly moms and grandpas and stuff like that. Uh, But I was like the only dad there because I get the freedom to choose. And it's a pretty expensive school. Don't get me wrong. It's, Mm -hmm. you know, it's a private Jewish school. Uh, So there's lots of like uh, lawyers and doctors and whatnot, you know, uh, who send their kids there. But, you know, I oftentimes look at their life how they have to commute to an office or they have to be on the phone all day long. And, and, you know, it, it allows me to appreciate, you know, the sort of businesses that we build as well as of course, the ability to build a team, because, you know, you mentioned you've got a big team and um, you know, you don't go seeing houses, they go, I'm, I'm sure they look over the contracts, they vet out the tenants, etc. They deal with mold, you know, on the ceiling and all that bullshit. But um I, I think what doctors and lawyers usually cannot do is they they sort of build themselves a, a hamster wheel that mm-hmm. can you know they that can pay them six figures sure for some of the multiple six figures which of course they get to uh, share half of it goes to the government but they really never have the freedom they never have the ability to just say you know what I just don't feel like working today and 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 I can take a day off without there being super duper consequence you know what I mean. Um, and oh, I yeah. think there's an art and a science to that. I think uh, it's a tremendous uh, privilege. And I think when you've made that call to go start your own business, uh, kind of having that vision, right? That if I want to work, I want to work hard. But if I don't and I want to spend time with my family, I will. I think that was a, a, a wise move that many of today's highest performers really never get to make. I mean, they just think money, success, whatever, but they never think, okay, money, success on my terms, because, Mm -hmm. you know, um, one of my favorite mentors, Dan Kennedy, you know, he always says, you don't want to uh, end up with success you hate, which I think is a, is a really smart and subtle thing to say, because oftentimes you see people build themselves like, you know, I'm in Toronto, so there's like lots of startups here and people commuting downtown from like up North. So they, like do two hours each way every day. Sure. Like, yeah. I would, you know, you give me $10 million a year, you know, $50 million. I would not do like, I would not commute two hours each way, even if I was making 50 times and gazillion times more money. It just, it wouldn't happen. No way. Yeah, no, that's brutal. I think, uh, once you get a taste of the lifestyle that you can have, you don't want to go back. And I think it is tough. It is tough to figure out that work-life balance um, because, you know, you've heard stuff like Grant Cardone talks about be obsessed or be average. Like, I do think there is some element of in order for you to achieve success, you've got to be all in and you've got to give it your all. And that's what it takes to have those breakthroughs. But at some point, you do have to have that perspective of, If it is always about achieving success and pushing forward, then you're going to miss out on so many life moments with the family that you're working so hard for, you know, and I've had, uh, thankfully my wife is not shy to tell me (laughs) that I need to, uh, back off working or whatever it is. She, she does a good job to, to try to keep me in check, but you know, I, I try to surround myself with other people that have seemed to have figured it out. And usually it all comes about, you know, you can work yourself to death and do that all day long, but usually the best and most success that you'll have is actually by delegating and getting other people on your team to do things, to give yourself that freedom. So you can truly be the business owner 
that you set out to be in the first place and have the freedom that you desired in the first place. So that's, that's what real success looks like to me. It's, it's something I feel like I'm constantly working on to get better, but my perfect day looks like, you know, waking up, maybe checking on some emails, making sure the team is motivated and uh, everybody's working and staying on top of what they need to. And then the rest of the day is, you know, being exercise, having movement in my day, um, eating healthy and, and making my body feel good. And then spending time with my kids out at the beach, you know, playing sports, experiencing new things, take, going on an adventure, you know, seeing the world. So um, that's what real success looks like to me. Dude, well said. Um, I think it's a great, uh, great point to end the episode. Now, so you're you're into real estate now. You do wholesaling, fix and flips. You also have a podcast. So maybe you can share a little bit about where we can go to find out more about you, kind of step into into Planet Dean, uh, so to speak. And uh, you know, for our audience uh, and listeners who are interested in you know sports, real estate, can come combo of two you know, we just want to hear um your story your message yeah so all the all the things that i've got going in my world is you know my active real estate business we're still pushing and and accomplishing awesome goals and you know we're like i said we're doing about 100 deals a year now and um so we've we've got all that type of stuff going on i've been going to i've been hosting events and speaking at events. So that's been really fun is to just getting out. And once you realize the power of relationships um, and speaking at different events, sharing your journey, sharing your message, uh, that's that's super fun and exciting. So I've been doing a lot of that and um, been coaching students too, how to get started in real estate. And I think wholesaling is undeniably the best way to get started because you don't need to be an expert on how to flip a house or how to own a rental property and dealing with tenants. You focus on finding deals and negotiating deals and getting paid pretty quickly. So um, so I coach students on that. The best way for people to get in, in touch with me, I always say this, if you're listening to this and we don't connect, then it's a missed opportunity because I actually answer my DMs. I wanna connect with more people because that's where more opportunities come. And that's it's a people world. That's what it's all about. So. You can always connect with me on social media, on Instagram, at Dean Rogers Real Estate. Uh, you can always connect with me at uh, online at DeanRogers.com. I've got all my stuff about uh, social media on there, um, different, different other podcasts that I've been on just like this one here, uh, different events that I'm um, hosting or speaking at, my coaching program, all that kind of stuff. So love to connect with people and uh, make sure you reach out for sure. All right, guys. So if you're listening on Spotify or Apple or Google, uh, make sure to check out listbuildinglifestyleshow.com for the uh, links in the show notes. And uh, yeah, I think I, I think I, first of all, I appreciate you sharing the message and kind of allowing us to take a peek into the, the the backstages of NFL and what it's like to get your head smashed, you know, several times a day. Um, and uh, I I really think like. The decision you made was uh, was a ballsy decision, something that I would assume most players never really uh, never really have the balls to 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 decide. Because, I mean, here you are invested your whole life into becoming an NFL player. You already you have the the bird right in your hand, mm -hmm. and then you know to walk away. I think that's courage because all of a sudden you realize that the success you have is not the success you want. So that's, that's tremendous. I really respect that. So thank you for sharing that. And, um, till next time we chat, have a good one.